hello friends welcome microsoft powerpoint what is microsoft powerpoint microsoft powerpoint is an application developed by microsoft which allows user to create slide of important information to present powerpoint presentation is an editable slide show create microsoft powerpoint often used for presentation or slideshow may includes formats, text, bullets, points, images, movies, sounds, etc. Easy to say, PowerPoint is a professional presentation program that allows you to create presentation slide that can be displayed on the computer screen or a projector that is plugged into your computer. Here is a list of some basic and advanced features of MS PowerPoint. Number one, customer color stream. Number two, add animation effects. Number three, create an edit table. Number four, manage hyperlinks. Number five, create custom shows. Number six, create edit and import charts number seven use the slide note and handout master number eight effort outlined and presentation slide to other softwares and platforms thank you hello everyone we are going to learn about microsoft powerpoint for beginners so in this course we are going to learn from a beginner to an advanced level where you can create beautiful slides for your presentation so let's see what all the lessons that we are going to learn so in this course we are going to cover getting started with powerpoint powerpoint with text background slide formatting text formatting in powerpoint table formatting in powerpoint icon formatting in PowerPoint, charts in PowerPoint, PowerPoint Smart Art, multimedia elements to PowerPoint, slideshow time customized in PowerPoint, secure slide in PowerPoint, PowerPoint animation and projects. So after completing all of these tools and how we can use it, we are going to cover slide design so that you can learn how to create and utilize all of those tools in your slide so hope you will like these lessons for powerpoint for beginners and i hope you will enroll on this course so if you don't like this course or you're still thinking about this course just purchase it now if you don't like you have 30 days money back option so that you can get your refund back but i hope once you start this journey with us you will love this course waiting for your feedback hello friends if you now learn microsoft powerpoint for beginners you are in the perfect place this complete course we teach you all the enters in depth practical and easy to follow tutorials my name is rezaul korim founder of web oral and in this class my partner with martin which is the powerpoint expert martin will be explain lots of more what makes of the course so awesome hello everyone this is microsoft powerpoint for beginners i am martin your co-instructor for microsoft powerpoint for beginner course and in this course i have joined with web oral to give our knowledge and make sure you learn Microsoft PowerPoint from a beginner level to an advanced level. We have gathered all of the information and how this industry works. We have brought up together and we are going to present you the basic understanding for Microsoft PowerPoint as a beginner. So enroll with us now and I hope you will like our course. If you have any issue with the course, let us know so that we can help you out. 
also you might be having trouble whether you need to enroll it or not enroll now and within 30 days if you don't like this course you can get your money back so hope to see you all in this course so on this lesson we are going to learn about microsoft excel ribbons so what is ribbon so when you are working with microsoft powerpoint you can see there are lots of powerful tool that is available and the topmost bar that we have over here which is file home insert design transition animation slideshow and few more which are known as ribbons so under each ribbon we have a tab group for example on home we have clipboard slide font paragraph drawing and editing some of the tab that is very powerful when we are working with microsoft excel for example let's go to home and we want to create a new slide let's click on new slide select slide option let's select title and content and you can see that through this tab we can able to create a new slide so now let's go to insert and see which of all the tools that we have we have a slide tables image illustration add-ons link comment text symbol and media and we have some design elements over here themes variant and even we can customize the slide size we have this transition we have animation slideshows and so on so now if you want to add more of this ribbon you can right click over here and you can select customize the ribbon and through this way you can very easily customize your ribbon you can create new tabs new groups you can even create your own set of ribbons that you use frequently so after that on the topmost we have this quick access toolbar so what this toolbar does is that we can use any of this tool and place it on this quick access toolbar so we can use it faster for example i want to select new slide and place it on this quick access toolbar right click on this toolbar and if i click on add to quick access toolbar you can see that i have able to access it so now on this ribbon if i'm on animation still i can create new toolbar i don't have to go to home and then go to this tab toolbar and on this file bar we can go and see our microsoft powerpoint interface as well which we gonna learn on our next lesson so hope you have understood the basic of microsoft excel ribbon see you on the next lesson so on this lesson we are going to learn about the powerpoint presentation interface so as you can see that this is our powerpoint presentation interface where we have on the top quick access toolbar on the quick access toolbar on the left hand side we have this save option we have undo and we have redo then we have the slide which we can start from the beginning and we have this custom quick access toolbar where we can select more option for this toolbar right over here you can see that this is the title of the presentation name when you're saving your presentation you can save it on a name of for this presentation and the title will be set over here then you have this search bar where you can search for the shape or you can share it also you can find out your presentation then on the right hand side you have this account where you can see that this is my mail account over here which i have logged in then you have ribbon display option use it as auto hide then you can tabs show tab and command as well then you have minimize your window and then x so we are done with the first quick access toolbar option then we have this ribbon option which we have already covered up on our last lesson on this ribbon everything we have under that is command and function all right these are the comments and the function that we have so after that on top you can see that on left hand side we have this file ribbon 
So when you click on the file ribbon, you go to the opening page of Microsoft PowerPoint. Over here, you can see that you have home, new, open, info, save, save as, and so on, which we're going to learn on our upcoming lessons. So over here, when you see that on this new, you can find themes. These are a few themes that is available. Also, you have this blank presentation. Under that, you have this recent file, which you have open and all the pin file that you have created. So now let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation interface. So as you can see that we have our PowerPoint presentation interface. On the left hand side, we have this PowerPoint slide. So this slide tab will help you out to figure out how many slides you have, all the different slide designs that you have. So how you can create that. You can right click on your mouse and you can click on new slide bar. And you can see that now we have this flat, uh, first slide out and this is our second slide out, right? If you want, you create this similar slide. What you can do, just right click over here and duplicate this slide. And you can see that you have this slide, duplicate slide over here. Now you want to place this second slide below this blank slide. So what you can do, just click on your mouse and drag it down. And very easily you can see that this is our first slide second slide and our third slide so now you can right click and you can delete the slide so this is the place where your slide will work so as i have deleted it i want to get back that slide so how can we do that let's go to this access toolbar and click on this undo button and you can see that clicking on this undo button will bring out the delete file that we have deleted so after that on down below you can see that we have few options so first option you can see that we have this note option so when you click on this note option you will find that you have place where you can write notes right so if you drag it up or down you can make it bigger or smaller even for this slide you can just drag left or right to make your slide larger or bigger right so what does this note does here when you have a presentation and you want some note to be written for you to present the presentation you can just write let's learn about the powerpoint presentation interface so as i have written this let's learn about the powerpoint presentation interface when i view this powerpoint or show this powerpoint to any of my client or to my colleagues this note won't be shown to them but it will shown to you and the presentation will be shown to them so this is how you can write out all your note for your PowerPoint. Later on, you have this comment option. So when you click on this comment option, you can select any of the slide and you can hit a uh, new comments. And I can write there is mistake in the background image, right? And if I save it over here, I click it over here. And when I go to all the PowerPoints, you can see that I have a comment over here. And if I click it, you can see that I have a comment and this comment can be replied by my other teammates. Also, I can write it over here to make sure that when I'm creating the PowerPoint, which will help me to remember if I missed anything on that PowerPoint or I need to make changes. This comment will help you out while we are designing a PowerPoint. We will go through that. We will learn more details about that. On our project what which we're gonna do through powerpoint you can see that we have normal slide shorter reading view and slideshow so if i click on this slide shorter you can see that all of my presentation pages will be shown over here and if i click on this reading view i will find all the pages as a reading view option and then the slideshow if i click it will start me for the slideshow and how i can go back to our interface just click on your skip button from your keyboard so now i have been able to came back to our interface now let's go back to normal and after that you can see that we have this zoom option so this is zoom out if i click on minus you can see that i can able to zoom out if i click on this plus i can zoom in to the presentation after that we have this fit to current window option let's click it over here and it have been fit to our current window so i hope you have understood how this presentation interface works and on our upcoming lessons we are going to learn more 
about these windows and how we can customize our PowerPoint presentation to Microsoft PowerPoint. Hope you have understood how to do this. See you on the next lesson. So now we will learn how we can manage our presentation through PowerPoint and how we can address them and show them to our client or our colleagues of this PowerPoint. So as you can see that I have the PowerPoint ready over here and we are going to learn how we can create such a dynamic PowerPoint through this course. So over here you can see that this is my PowerPoint which is already have been done. So I want to present it to my clients. I want to present it to my clients or my colleagues. So first what we can do, we can go to this ribbon home. So first of all, we can just go to our quick access bar and over here you can see that start from beginning and also we can use a five for shortcut. Let me click over here and you can see that we have we have been presenting our presentation. So most of us, the common mistake we do when we are presenting a PowerPoint, we try to click it, right? And you can see that very easily we are going to our next portion, right? But this is not a professional way or this is not a right way. Because what happens when you do that, you don't have any access to your PowerPoint. So how can we do that? So for doing a proper way, you can use your keyboard navigation mouse. So you can use your navigation keys, upper key for going to the previous page and lower key for going down page so let, let's go to the first page and let's start the presentation and now i will use the lower key or the down arrow key and you can see that we are on page one so now i click on the lower key we will go to page two then i will click once more and we are on the page three and four five but now i want to go back to page Four. So what I can do, I will just click on the upper arrow key. And you can see that now we are on page four, page three, page two, and page one. Also, there is another shortcut which is a keyboard in button. So if I click on in, it means next, and you can see that we are going to our next pages. Also, we have P button for the previous page through this very easily and very professionally we can present our powerpoint so now let's go to page 16 which is our ending page right and now if we go to our next page you see a dark blank presentation and on top you can see that end of the slideshow click to exit but this is not a good way to present your client that's why i have created on page 6 a presentation which means that this is the end for our slide and then i will just end the presentation also you can see that here are few navigation buttons so this is for previous and this is for next this is a laser powerpoint so you can show that uh, through your mouse or if you have any kind of device to show your powerpoint properly over here you have different kind of colors you have pen to write down many things over here so if i want to explain something more which is our first name of the company and lopers is our second name so this is how you can explain your powerpoint so this is how you can explain your powerpoint right and there is eraser highlighters and it is all slide so let's see how we can do this properly right let's go to this uh, slide and let's use this pen option over here if i click right to this pen option and i will use the highlighter so i want to highlight this portion and you can see that very easily we are able to highlight and we can present it properly and also we can erase all the link then we have another option which is the slide guide where we can see that we have all the slide that we have created on a single page, right? So let's click on the page that you want to show them. So right now let's show them the slide nine. So also you can see that we have this button of zooming. So sometime you want to zoom some portion 
for example this is a fashion so you want to show them this t-shirt design so as you can see that we have a good t-shirt design and you can just show them through this zoom option also there are many other options available over here you can go and play around with it after ending the presentation when you go to your last page come over here and end the show and that's all how you can present your presentation also on the newer version for this microsoft powerpoint you have this slideshow option and here you can just go and start with the current page you want to show for example right now i want to show them our third page and i want to start my presentation from this page three so i can go to this slideshow ribbon and from here i can click on this from current slide and if i click on that you will able to start from the selected slide and show your presentation let's end it and let's go to custom slide show over here you can custom your slideshows also set up slideshows hide slideshows so maybe i want to hide this so let me just hide it and over here when we start our slide let's try it you can see that the page two have been hidden let's go and unhide it also we have this rehearsal timing record slideshow and monitor options as well if you click on this slide and right click over here and you can also use show presenter view so after you click on the presenter view you can see that we have three boxes right so as i'm using a single box you can see that let me show you this is my presentation if you have the dual monitor this is our presentation screen and this is the screen which as a presenter you will have so you will have all the access over here and when you're presenting your viewers will see only this portion right at the screen and you will see this dialog box on which you can very easily control your slide also as i have told you earlier if you write a note so let's go and write a note right let's go and write a note so let's go and start the slide from beginning and let's use this show presenter view and this is the screen that we will have so as a presenter you are having this screen so as i have created a note for our next slide let's click on slide two and you can see that over here you have this note the people who are viewing your slide won't be able to see the note that you have created and you know when you're presenting the next slide what is coming up and you can prepare yourself for having a very good presentation so i hope you have understood how you can present a proper way i hope you have understood how you can create or present a proper presentation through microsoft powerpoint so let me end this slide here and i hope you will under you have understood how you can present it properly hope to see you on the next lesson where we are going to create such a beautiful presentation for our lesson see you on the next lesson so now we're gonna create our first powerpoint presentation so when you open your powerpoint you will see this dashboard where if you click on this new you will able to see many templates which have been categorized if i go down below you can see that we have different category of theme such as presentation so it will show you many presentation theme that you have then let's go back and you can see that there are educational themes there are charts diagram business in program so let's click on business and you can see that here are many templates that is available so if i click on this school design and you can see that it will download this template and it will apply to our powerpoint but for this lesson we are going to create from scratch so let's go to file new and you can see that we will take this blank presentation so as we have created a blank presentation this is our first slide so now as this is our first slide i want to make a small design changes on this slide 
So for doing that, we will go to this ribbon and over here we have the design option. So let's click on this uh, design option and you will see and you will notice there is different type of themes available over here. So let me click on this arrow down button, more button. And you can see that here are few default theme that we have. From here, we can choose it and you can see that it is changing our slides, right? So for this example, let's go and let me take this darker theme slate and let me click on it. And you can see that we have able to take that theme for this scratch project. And after selecting the theme, you can see that beside the theme option, you have this variant. So let's click on this more button and you can see that here are four variant available which are changing depending on our theme our first slide so we have created our first slide let's go and create or duplicate the slide and let's make it as our second slide great now we have able to create slide through the theme now as you can see over here we have variant on this variant we can change the color let's go and create the theme variant as blue let's take this blue right from this variant you can define your brand identity which means you can select the whole theme color font and other variant for this design so small tip before we process further when you're creating presentation template make sure you select your font your color beforehand so that you don't have to manually make all the changes when you create such presentation. Let's go and select a font. Let's take Time New Roman. And after that, you can see that we have, so we can select any effect. Let's take glossy effect as well. And you can see that both of these slides have been changed according to the design. Right now, if I want to change this, font i will go to home and change the font now you can see that my font have been changed but if i duplicate a new theme you can see that our first let's create third slide so you can see that first slide and the third slide is similar but the second slide font have been changed so through this way you can very easily create your first slide also you can see that we have this slide size option you have the standard slide let's take it and sheer fit and you also have wide screen you can even create your custom slide size depending on your need also you have this format background which we will be learning on our upcoming lesson so go create your first slide and play around with this design theme element variant and those font and try to get design pattern for your brand or for your project hope you have gained something out of this lesson see you on the next lesson welcome back to this lesson where we are going to learn the basic of how we can save this slide so now we will go to home oh you can see that on the quick access bar we have this save option right you can click over here and give your PowerPoint name and save it. This is the easiest one. Also, you can go to your file, click on save when you're saving your first blank presentation. If you click on save, select your file and just give the file name, our first slide, and then hit save and it will save your presentation. So through this way, you can save it. So now if i create a duplicate slide and make it our third slide and i want to save it you can click on it and it will save under our first slide or go to your file click on save as go to your powerpoint select your file and save it we have updated our slide as well also there are a few shortcuts which is Control s where you can save your file right and for your mac you can use command s for saving your slide 
one of your slide when you're done with your first slide use your shortcut control s or use this quick access button of save to save your slide when you're done with your second slide just save it so that you can be on a safe side to save your presentation slide on microsoft powerpoint hope you have understood how you can save your presentation on microsoft powerpoint see you on the next lesson hello everyone on this lesson we are going to learn how we can create hyperlink in powerpoint this is a very effective when we are creating a file and we want to redirect that web page or a selected path of a document where we want to shift them to this is kind of a shortcut so that you don't have to have a lot of hassle to move around for example as you can see that i have created my slide already so over here if we write a mail address for example let's write hyperlink at gmail.com and hit enter you can see that automatically it have created a hyperlink also if we write our website address for example google.com and hit enter it will create a hyperlink now this is how we can very easily able to create hyperlink so what if we need to put this hyperlink in between a sentence for example on my right hand side you can see let us give a mail to a person so over here we have a sentence where it says that we want to give a emails so it will be much more effective if we can make this email as an hyperlink and we can send email just clicking over here to create that manually we will go to our insert option under insert option we'll find this link so let's click on this link option and over here as we want to send an email let's go to email address and we can just select that email address over here and hit ok and hit ok now you can see that we can very easily click over here and we can send email to this path now we have another point let us visit to the website google so i want this google to be hyperlinked so when you click on this place you will be redirect to the website google.com similar format let's go to link but this time we are going to use existing file or web page over here you can see that address is given so let's give the address of www.google.com right and hit ok now you can see that google also have been selected as hyperlink now as you have understood that how easy it is to insert hyperlink what if i want to move around in my excel sheet for doing that you can see that i have a button over here this is a shape here it said that let's go to the next slide so when i click over here it will take us to slide two so how can we create that hyperlink right click on this shape and you go to hyperlink under that we will use this time place in this document so we are creating hyperlink inside this document itself so let's select the slide 2 and hit ok so now this shape i have also been created as hyperlink all right so before we move further you want this hyperlink underline to be removed so let's go to home let's select this email address on this underline font tab let's remove this underline option but you can see that nothing is happening because hyperlink have its own format so that's why we cannot change its format it will be considered as because this hyperlink have been inserted inside the html code 
so let's go and play the slide so let's start the slide so now if I click on this google.com it will take us to the website google.com so when we click on google.com it will take us to google.com right also if we click on this email address it will take us to our mail or Google Chrome wherever you have your email address it will take you there now let's try to select this button so I want to go to the next slide so if I click on this button it will take us to slide 2 let's see that so now I'm clicking on this button and you can see that we have able to move to our next slide this is how we can use our hyperlink in our slide hope you have understood how you can use this hyperlink and this is very effective when you have created a powerpoint for your client and you give this uh, powerpoint to someone else see you on the next lesson on this lesson we are going to learn how we can create a text box so when you create your first slide you will get such a placeholder where written click to add title so which clearly means that when you click over here you can write the title let's write text place holder all right and you can see that this is our title right and after that click to add subtitles so this is for the subtitles so let's write let's play with text all right so this is our title and this is our text so let's go and create a new slide so i have right click my mouse over here on the slide and click on new slide over here you can see that we have new text holder place so click to add title this is our second item and over here you have to create a text so on this layout this is the default layout that we have you can change this layout as well so how can you change the layout let's see on the home ribbon here is the layout option when you click on this layer option you have title slider title and content section header title only comparison to content blank and so on so let's go and take this to container over here we have two container so on this both container you can insert a text so here we have able to write a text let's copy it and we can write it over here as well so now what happens if you take a new layout which is blank let's go and create a new layout as blank new slider which is blank so now i want to select a placeholder for the text so how can i do that over here if i click on this insert option you will be able to see a text box over here so under insert ribbon you will have this text box and if you click over here you can see that you have able to create the text placeholder so if you closely there are six circles so these circles will help you out to drag and create those text placeholder so i want to create over here three containers so this is the first container i have then let's copy it and paste it so as i have able to create the text holder let's write it first text box i want to create a second text box let's write second also i want to create the third one and the fourth one right let's drag it and you can see that we have very good option of even space and alignment see you can see these lines over here which shows that my text box have been aligned properly so this is my third one copy and paste it and this will be my fourth one all right so over here i have able to create three text box placeholder right so through this way we can very easily get a text placeholder so right now let's go and create another layout so i have right click on the slide and over here we have this layout option let's take title only and you can see that we have a title placeholder so through this way very easily you can create text holder 
you can create this text box or this placeholder for your PowerPoint. Hope you have understood. Try to create your own text box on your presentation and leave it for the review so we can see it how you are doing it. See you on the next lesson. Now we're going to learn how we can use this layout and use this placeholder for our text, image, and other data. So over here, when you open your PowerPoint and you have your first slide, you can see this is the layout. So if I go to home ribbon and then we go to slide option, slide layout, and we are taking title and let's take comparison. All right. So over here, you can see that we have click to add title. So on this title, we will write our title for this slide. So let's write it image and red. So we have this comparison layout. So over here, this is the text box that we have been using or we have learned on our earlier lesson. You can delete it or you can keep it. For this example, let's try deleting this. How you can delete it? Just click on this box where you can see that it has been selected. Right click on your mouse and you can, and this box will be deleted. So let's go and delete this box as well. Now let's go and bring that box manually. So let's go to design, insert, and let's take the text box. And over here, I want to create that text box for the comparison title. So now let's go back again and create for the second one text box and we will be creating for the second one. All right. And we can adjust it. This circle that is being on this square. All right. So now this is one of the text box. Let's write it as image. Let's make this text a little bit larger. Let's make it 32 and let's write it as text. So now over here, I want to insert an image. So how can I do that? You can see here are some insert options. So from here, I will go and select this picture option. And over here, I have few images. So let me just select an image and insert it. And you can see that I have able to insert an image. And over here, I want to insert a text. But right now, I will insert a table. So here is the table and here is the column and row. You can select it. So let's make it five column, five rows. Okay. And you can see that I have able to create a table as well. So through this way, we can very easily use this layout for making changes to our slide. So go and play around with all this layout. And if you have any issue, just let me know so that I can help you out. So on this lesson, we are going to learn how we can use this bullet point. So as you can see that we are going to create a blank presentation. So as we have created over here, let us give a title. So for this, I will give a title as daily expenses and then I will list out all of the expenses. So over here, we have the box. I will just drag it down a little bit and I will just adjust it for this slide great now i want to give all of my expenses or bullet point them so the first expense i have for the day is then i have traveling then i have some savings and fuel expense house rent and for insurance all right so these are my daily expenses or we can say it as monthly expenses great so now you can see that all of my point or all of the title that i have expenses is not as bullet point so how can i do that for doing that let's select all of them and click on this ribbon home under that you'll find this paragraph on this paragraph you will find this bullet point option and if you just click it over here you can see that you have the bullet point visible on your slide so now let's adjust it and let's place it as align left. Great. Now it looks pretty good. So now you might be thinking, how can I change this bullet point design as well? You just click on this drop down, and over here you can see that you have different type of bullet point. There are hollow rounded, then a square filled, 
hollow square field star then you have arrow and you have check mark so when you do that just select all of them and just click on any one of them and you can see that the bullet points start working so now if i insert another bullet point it will automatically adjust so for now let's insert as restaurant and you can see that now we have this auto bullet point available this is how we can use this bullet point now you might be thinking how can you use this numeric option over here so for doing that it's very simple just select them and beside this bullet point you have this numeric option where if you click on it you can see that there are options available where you can use numbers and you can use even roman numbers as well as your alphabetical orders so let's click on one two three over here we have this numeric number so if i click over here and write something else it will automatically let's write stationary and you can see that it is automatically changing the numbers right so now what happens if i want to use as a bullet point inside a bullet point so for doing that what we can do let's go over here and if we use tab you can see that under 2.1 we can use write pen paper as a sub bullet point under paper if i use again tab button we will have 2.2.1 as white paper brown paper so through this way very easily you can use all of these uh, bullet points numeric bullet points or simple bullet points you can see that this is very easy to use bullet point on powerpoint so hope you have understood how you can use this bullet point and through this make some design and show to us so we can give you some feedback hope you have understood how to do this see you on the next lesson so on this lesson we are going to learn how we can change the background color so oftentimes what we do we get a rectangle and we create a similar rectangle box according to our powerpoint slide and then we can change the color right okay so this is how we can make the background color change this have a drawback the drawback is whenever you're doing something like this this will always move around and when you're creating a new slide let's create a new slide you don't have the background color for all of your project so how can you create a background color and which will be your theme and you can use them as theme for doing that you click on your mouse and go to format background and when you click on that you will find options on your right hand side over there you can see that you have solid fill and under solid fill you go and select the color so now we have this color and when i create a new slide or when i duplicate the slide you can see that we have the color and when i drag it you can see that this rectangular shape or the background color is not moving around which is pretty good when you're doing a slide and it won't change your slide position and the background positions so now under this color you have this transparency on this transparency if i just increase the transparency you can see that i can make the solid color change to a different portion so for example let's take a black and when i increase the transpiration you can see it's white when it's to zero it become black so through this way very easily we can create solid background color to our powerpoint so on this lesson we are going to learn how we can use gradient color as a background color so it is similar to our changing the background color let's go right click and go to format background and after clicking on this format background you can see that under solid fill we have gradient color so on this gradient field you can see that we have present gradient so here are the gradient shapes so let's take a gradient shape over here and this is the present gradient pattern that we have and then we have this line so there are few lines which is linear which is line radial rectangular path and we have shade from the title right so let's select the linear 
and then we have the direction so we can change the direction so let's try to change the direction and you can see the changes happening on our slide under that we have angle so you can manually change the angle according to your design need and you can fix the gradient angle after that you have gradient stop so all these key points will help you out to decide the gradient where it will work where the color will be transparent and it will be bold so now here we can select its positions and we can create or add new stop point and we can change its color as well so you can see that on the middle we have created a new gradient color and i have changed it so now let's change this color as well uh, to red all right and let's take the position and let's make it a little bit of transparent and let's make the brightness a little bit lesser and through this way you can very easily create a gradient type of background for your powerpoint hope you have understood how you can do this gradient easily also you can delete this gradient selecting the gradient stop point and hit this gradient stop button and it will delete your gradient bar so i hope you have understood how to use gradient on your powerpoint see you on the next lesson so on this lesson we are going to learn how we can use image as a background for doing that let's right click and go to format background under format background uh, we will have picture or text fill so if you click on this picture or text fill you can see that we have this pattern fill and picture text fill so let's select the picture or text fill under that we have picture source so from here you can get the picture from file on your desktop or you can use your stock image or online pictures from your drive or bing so let's just select it from drive right let's go and select picture and insert it and you will be seeing that picture will be set for the background well now we have the picture on the background now you can see that we have a texture over here which we can utilize but as we have used picture let's go and bring that picture back insert and then we have this transparency so on this transparency when we increase it you can see that there will be a shade on your background image right so let's decrease a little bit so now we can use style picture as texture as well so if you select it you can see that we have more option which is available and you can play along with it and then we have this pattern field on this pattern field you can use any of the pattern and you can change the colors according to your need and this will work pretty good for your powerpoint slide as well and you can select the background and so on so i hope that you have understood how you can use picture or texture fill on your powerpoint see you on the next lesson so on this lesson we are going to learn how we can use background images uh, to our slide so as you can see over here this is our content that we have for this slide and we are going to create this slide so over here you can see that we have very simple slide where we have just only text so now if we just do the basic we will go and select the theme we can do that right but these theme are very basic sometimes what happens that your company have a brand identity and they have a uh, different designs or you have different taste of design so how can you implement that design into your powerpoint for doing that it is very easy we will go to insert and we will select a picture so let's go and select a picture let's go to downloads over here we have this picture of colors let's select it and you can see that we have able to bring that picture so let's resize this picture so that this picture covers up the table and then we will send it at the back so let's go to this 
picture format and after going to the picture format we will use this transparency option so when we are using this transparency option you can see that the picture is blending to it so if i select this transparency 80 percent you can see that very easily we are able to see our text right so now you can see that the black color of the text looks dull why because this picture have been placed on top of that text so we need to send this picture behind this text so for doing that we will right click on the mouse and you can see that we have two options bring to front and send to backward so for this we are going to send it to backward let's send it to back and you can see that we have able to bring up the text in front and now if we go to this picture format option transparency and if we want to increase the transparency still the text looks cryptic. all right so this is how we can very easily use any picture behind any slide now let's go to our second slide and practice it once more let's go and insert a video let's try it and over here let's go to downloads and i have this uh, video over here and let's insert it and as you can see the video is over here let me just put it back as well send it back and you can see that my text doesn't look crips because the background that we have is dark so let's go and change the text color first let's make it white all right so now my text looks good as well so now i want this to be as my background so let's go to video format over here we can make few changes on that so let's go to playback and let's set it as loop until stop and let's click on automatically right so let's go and see our presentation okay this is our first slide that we have and we have used background image now you can see that we have able to create a background video for our microsoft excel slide so through this way very easily you can create background with still picture and video in your powerpoint see you on the next lesson on this lesson we are going to learn about formatting text in powerpoint so as you can see over here we have a cover page where we have welcome to powerpoint and a subtitle right so now we want to design this text over here so before going to that you can see that we have a border over here which is known as placeholder so this placeholder what it does it holds a specific amount of text images or anything that is related for presenting on this slide which will help you to navigate that simple portion over this slide so now if i want to change all of this text the uh, style size and colors if i click over here and if i do that let's go and change the color it changes right but what if i want to change only this one so for doing that we have to use this cursor so we have to click on the text over here and then select it so for now i want to select the welcome and then i want to change this format so i will go and select a font let's select this font agent cfp and i want to increase its size Let's go and increase it to 80, right? 
and if i click on this placeholder and change it you can see that all of the place holding place have been changed according to the color according to the font so now i want to change its color so let's go and change the color under home ribbon we have this font option where we can use font color option over here and select the color so let's go and select the color let's take purple all right and for powerpoint i want to use red color great and on these two i want to use text highlight so let's highlight great so now you can see on the placeholder there are four corners on which we have this control handle so this handle will help us to control that placeholder but you can but you can see that on top we still have some places where it's empty so how we can fill that let's go and select 120 font and you can see that the text is on text is inside this placeholder it is not coming out from the text holder so if i increase or decrease this control head uh, through this control header you can see that all of my text would be on this box it won't go anywhere else so after that let's go over here and i want to use so on this subtitle what i want to do i want to underline it so let me just select all of them and use this underline and you can see that through this underline we can get the underline to our text if i want to make it italic i will click on this also we can create bold through this bold control option great now over here you can see that we also have change case section on which if we click on this lowercase uppercase capital each word depending on our need we can make all of those changes then we have this character spacing on this character spacing you can see that when i click on normal it's been normal character space i want to make that subtitle as loose i can use that depending on the design style we can do that also on top we have increased font size this is similar to the numeric one and we can also decrease it also if i click on this arrow over here you can find more options related to the font so now what if i want to just use this powerpoint style to a specific portion of my subtitle for doing that i can just use this format painter and just click on anything that i want so you want to select from which you want to copy from let's select it and let's copy it. and then let's go to the subtitle and use this format painter so i will click on this placeholder and click on this format painter once and then come to my subtitle and click it over here and you can see that my subtitle have taken out all of the design pattern that i have on my header so let's decrease the size a little bit well this is how this format paint works so i hope you have understood how you can use this text you can increase decrease make it bold underline and much more to your powerpoint so see you on the next lesson on this lesson we are going to learn how we can create text into columns so as you can see on this slide i have text which is overflowing from the slide that we have right now i want to place this text and create a column wise design so how can i do that so let's select it and then you can see that here is the text box on that let's right click and use this format shape option let's click on format shape option after clicking on this format shape option i want this overflowing data to be placed inside the slide for doing that i will go to this text option 
and then go to the text box option then I will go to this column button and click on this column and then I will create four columns over here and now I want to adjust it inside this slider so if I just drag these corners you can see it is moving its uh, place and it is shifting but still now we are not able to bring out the text that we have overflowing outside of this slide inside the box we will go to our text option and select all of the text so after that we will go to shape option and then we will go to this option called size and proportion on that we will decrease the height let's decrease the height and you will be able to see that all of the text which were overflowing will take its place and it will start applying as a fork this text will start to place itself inside this four column also we can use this width option to resize all of the text and now you can see that we have able to create a text into column in a single slider and our text is not overflowing out of this slide so now let's see how it looks so right now my slide have one two three four column and all of the text have been placed inside that so hope you have understood how you can create or bring text and create a uh, make it as a column see you on the next lesson on this lesson we are going to cover some of the action button that we can create in microsoft powerpoint so over here if we go to insert and you can see that we would have a tab under which we have shape so on this shape you can see over here we have some action button so what is action button so when we browse our website we found find few of the buttons that we use to navigate our website similar way we have some of these action button that we can implement in our microsoft powerpoint so that we can very easily move around in our slides because mo most of the time our slide doesn't stick with 10 or 12 uh, slide it might go up to 30 40 plus of a slide for a presentation so that time it is very hassle to go uh, go to any slide one by one so let's go to this action button and let's implement it so over here you can see that we have go back action button we have go forward action button go to end we have uh, go to beginning we have this home action button and we have get information and return so let's use this go home action button let's select it and now you can see that i have a cursor over here so on this i will just place that home on top of my slide and when i press the home button over here you can see that i get a pop-up so on this pop-up you can see that on the mouse click on the hyperlink to when i click on that i will come to the first slide then we have this mouse over option so on this mouse over option when i come to this place it will directly take us but now we will use mouse click option and hit ok great so now let's make few of the design changes over here let's make the theme wide shape fill color we don't want uh, to have a shape fill color we can change the outline colors all right so now i want to put our next button on the corner so let's go to insert shape tool 
next button and I will place that next button over here and as you can see that the hyperlink to next slide okay let's go and change the theme great now let's move to our next slide on this slide as well we are going to place the home button next and previous so let's go to insert shape we will use this next button down over here next okay and then let's change the style let's go to insert again and place previous button on this corner okay and we have left with home button let's go and select the home button and let's place the home button over here all right so now on this both slide we have able to create it on our last slide we are going to create a informational shape let's go and select this and I want to place it over here okay so when somebody clicks on that we can create a hyperlink we can take them to a different slide or we can place a URL over here so for this example let's write a URL all right let's hit ok so now let's play our slide so over here this is our slide and if I click on this button it will take a take me to the next slide if I click on the previous button it will take us to our main slide so let's go to our slide 2 and let's click on this home button and you can see that we have able to come to our home button as well so let's go to our third slide which is the last slide that we have and over here I have created a link so when somebody clicks on this button it will take us to a different browser it will take us to the browser and show us the exact location that I have placed in over here and you can see that we have able to get the Google file over here great so now you know how to use this shape action button tab in your slide so just go and explore all of this function that we have learned so that you can utilize them perfectly in your slide see you on the next lesson so on this lesson we are going to learn how we can use table for our slide so to do that we have to go to our insert ribbon let's take a new slide for now and let's change the layout to blank under that let's go to insert on that we have this table option so as you can see that we have some blocks over here which are columns and rows so as I drag my mouse you can see that our table have been formed on our slide right so over here I want to take four rows and five columns all right great and if I click over here you can see that I have one two three four rows and five columns right okay this is one of the method that we have uh, how we can get table there is another method which is let's go to insert table option under table you have this insert table option so let's click on this insert table option after that you have a dialog box on which you can manually Put how many columns you want and how many rows you want for this example I want two columns and four rows okay and you can see that now we have 
two columns and four rows so this is the basic way how you can insert a table now we come along to a table design option when you use this insert table option this table design and layout design layout will appear on your screen so first let's go and see about table style option so over here you can see that a tick mark is done over the header row so if i uncheck it you can see that on this table the header part have been gone if i click back the header color have been adjusted then we have a banded rows so what is banded rows so as you can see that we have alternative colors between this color and the alternative this color is similar right so if i uncheck it you can see that alternative color have been gone so now if i check back again you can see that alternative color have appeared so now let's uncheck the header row let's go and click for first column so as you can see right now the darker blue color have been appeared to our left hand side and if i just uncheck it and click on last column you can see it have been appeared on my right hand side even if i click on total rows and header rows you can see top and bottom bottom so on bottom we use mostly for totals and over here we use for our headings great and also we can use this alternative color for our rows and columns as well so now you you might think how to change the table style right so over here we have this table style let's click over here and you can see that there are a lot of style that is available over here so there is orange color yellow color and so on so let's go and change the color to orange and you can see that we have able to change the color so what if we want to change the color customized which is not available over here so you can see that we have this shading option over there if we use that let's select it and let's use the shading and you can see that we can manually use shading option for our design right even we can use border all borders we can use top border and so on even we can use some of the effect that might looks good to you according to your design right so these are the basics that we need for our table also we have this drawing border cell you can use at we can use this pencil for creating that borders also we can increase and decrease the length of the border and we can even erase some of the borders right So this is how we can use table and we can design our PowerPoint table for our presentation. So on this lesson, we are going to learn how we can create table with Microsoft Excel. So over here, I have an Excel file, right? So if I copy this and if I paste it on a new blank, let's, let's paste it on a new blank slide let's paste it and you can see that we have able to bring out the text file itself right so if i make changes over here let's uh, try to change it you can see that we are able to do that but what if i want to bring the excel inside microsoft powerpoint so let's create a new slide and under which we will go to insert on the tab we have table and you can see that we have this excel spreadsheet option so let's let's click on excel spreadsheet so now you can see that my whole screen have been changed to microsoft excel screen so my whole interface have been changed and right now my interface is all about excel so right now if i use this excel 
file let's just place it so right now on our slide we have the excel sheet so you can see that when i copy this excel data and paste it over here it have placed it right but on our second slide we have the exact spreadsheet on microsoft excel so exact spreadsheet inside microsoft powerpoint so you can understand how much powerful this microsoft powerpoint is so over here if we do a calculation for example 10 plus 20 plus 30 and if we use auto sum and you can see that total as well right so here we can even do all of the mathematical function inside microsoft powerpoint but if i go back to our first slide let's go to our first slide and if i try to do that you can see that we doesn't have any option to do that so now let's go to this microsoft excel let me just place it and over here let me press uh place microsoft powerpoint as well so let's see if i change any data inside microsoft powerpoint whether it changes inside our microsoft powerpoint so let me just place 50 over here let's press let's write 50 and you can see that on on our excel file it is not changing right because this is just an copy and paste option nothing is happening inside it so i hope you have understood how you can use excel in powerpoint as well so see you on the next lesson so this lesson we are going to create an editable icon in powerpoint so as you can see that i have already taken a new slider for this editable icon now let's go and select blank slider for now and then what i want to do i want to insert icon let's go first on the shape and bring the text so inside this text i will place my icon let's go back to insert again so now let's select symbol under this symbol you will find winding on that let's go and select icon let's select this telephone let's insert after inserting it you can see that it have been placed over here and we can increase its size so let's go home and then increase its size to eight now i will just create another shape over it let's go and select the shape and let me just select both of them and then go back to insert after that let's go to shape format and under shape format you can see that we have this mark tape on that we will go and use this intersect which will intersect the color so now if i change the colors you will be seeing that this shape will change its color according to the color you will place right so through this way very easily you can create shapes and icons also newer powerpoint slide you can also use this icon on this icon you might find most of the icon that is needed for example let's select this t-shirt right and let's insert and it will download that and it will insert you the design right so through this way you can use icons to your presentation in microsoft powerpoint so on this lesson we are going to learn about how we can create chart in powerpoint so as you can see that i have already opened up new template as you can see that i have already opened the blank presentation now we gonna learn how we can insert tables or charts 
so what we gonna do we will go to our insert ribbon under that we have this chart option on this chart option you can see that you have so many options which is column line high bar area x y map stock surface and so on from which we gonna first learn how we can use this column so depending on your need you can use line chart you can use pie chart and so on so for this lesson or example we are going to use column so let's select the column and as we have selected the column let's remove those placeholder first and you can see that we have able to see our excel sheet right which have been popped up so over here what this excel sheet will does it will change all of these bar positions so over here first we can give this chart name for example let's give the chart name as cell and after that let's go over the excel file where we have category one two three four which you can see down here category one two three four so we can change those name let's select as computer monitor let's use ram mobile and also we can add one more or many more so let me add something else as keyboards all right you can see that the keyboard section has been added as well so now on this series one we will use january february march right and you can see that down over here our sales are dead have been changed so this is january february march so we are figuring out which month bar chart have been increased or decreased right so now let's uh, place this keyboard cells which we're gonna do is five then we put 3.8 2.4 and you can see when i'm changing all of these factors in this chart the bar chart have been changed also we can edit few more things as you can see that we have these control handles we can increase and this decrease this chart according to our need also if i close it and then you have this other option which is chart style you can change the chart style from here depending on your style you can select colors for your chart also you can use this filter option if you want only january month to be skipped or you just want january to be shown then you want only computers to be shown you can do that and if you apply it you can see that as well so let's select all of them and also you can use gradient color for your background and you can design this chart accordingly also let's go to insert and see few more charts let's go use pie chart and you can see that the pie chart have been changed so as you can see that we have a pie chart at the moment with the validation that we have did so now you want to edit that excel sheet again so just go to this edit data option let's edit data and when you open that data you can see that you have able to open up your data and you can make changes to them so i hope you have understood how you can create chart in power so on this lesson we are going to learn how we can insert excel chart and graph into our powerpoint so as you can see that i have opened up chart that have been created through excel so i want to copy this and i want to paste it on powerpoint so how can i do that let's right click and let's copy it and after going to the powerpoint let's go right click on the mouse and we want to paste it and there are several options of pasting one is use destination theme keep source format use destination theme and link data keep source formatting and link data and picture so for this example i want to place the link where when i change it on my excel 
the graph will change to my powerpoint as well so i will use this use destination theme and link and you can see that my graph have been placed over here so let me make a little bit larger through the pointers all right so you can see that this is my chart right now and this is a chart for students right student chart and through this chart we can change its design we can change its format style let's change it we can also filter them as we want all right so we have able to link that chart so what if i change a simple value and let's see whether it works in my powerpoint so as you can see that we have got 59 let's go to our excel and let's change it to 90 and you can see that this bar have increased right let's go to powerpoint and see whether it increased or not yes it have been increased so if i change uh, let's make raise all of the mark as 90 and let's see the changes let's copy paste it and you can see all of the chart have been placed as 90 let's go to our powerpoint and you can even see it have been linked so now a question might come how you can find out which uh, graph have been linked or you want to change this graph link position for doing that what you have to do go to file and then let's go to information under information you can see that there is an option called edit link to file let's click on edit link to file so over here you can see that it has been linked to our chart and graph excel file and which is updated manually you can even update it through this or you can auto click for automatical update as well as you can change the source you can even select a different tables or destination that you want so through this way i hope you can very easily place your chart to your microsoft powerpoint which is a very handy tool so that you don't have to manually place all of your graph which you already have created on microsoft excel or on different platforms hope you have understood how to do this see you on the next lesson so on this lesson we are going to learn how we can create powerpoint smarter so as you can see that we have four bullet point dog cat lion and flamingo for doing that let's uh, go to the ribbon insert and under that you will find smarter option let's click on this smart art graphic and after selecting that you can see that there are few different categories so there are list there is a uh, hexagon picture captions and so on so let's go and select one of them let's select the picture caption right let's select it okay and now you can see that let's select all of them and then let's create a smart art so let's go to insert and select this smart art option under that we will use picture caption list but there are so many there are block list there are vertical bullet list hexagon just play around with them and you would see the very different designs so let's use picture caption list so as you can see that we have our smart art have been appeared so now let's go and give those text the name dog cat lion and flamingo all right so let's delete this part and we will just keep this smart art right so even you can change all of the name from here lion the king in such way you can do that as well so now we want to place images right so let's go and select from a file and let's go to the download place where we have downloaded so now let's select the image so as you can see inside this every single box you can click on them so let's click on flamingo and let's insert it from the file we have downloaded so let's go to download and this is my flamingo let's place it over here then let's select the dog let's select the dog picture then let's select 
the cat picture and then the lion so we have able to create that right so now we have proper smart art object over here so we can even change the colors we can change the design as well if we want so you can see there is a slight bit of design so let's go to the layout and let's change the layout to something else let's go and select horizontal picture list over here you can see that we have able to create a layout which is much different but all of the item that i have placed have been same now we can also change its color of the individual of this every single horizontal line so let's go and make it all gradient accent we can even change it to different colors and also we have different smarter style on which we can use it as we want so you can see that we have flat screen we even have insert option polished and so on so depending on your need you can do that so when you select the smart art you will find this new option smarter design and format option for your design so for example i have just randomly meshed up with all of my design so how can i get that we can go to the smart art design option and we can click on this reset graph and all of the graph will be resetted and all of the design that we have created will be gone to our default font right so through this way very easily you can create a smart art to your powerpoint so that it looks more pleasant to the eye see you on the next lesson on this lesson we are going to learn about graphic smart art so over here you can see that i have some country's name and their city's name so i want to put it on my slide which looks much more elegant and which look a much more better so if you see over here let's go and slide it up this looks very simple right so i want to make it more dynamic or give a graphical elements on it so how can i do that so as you have this bullet point let me just select all of them and go to home ribbon under that we have convert to smart art after clicking on that you can see there are different style of smart art that we have so we can select it so for this example let's select this hierarchy list over here if i choose it you can see that the bullet point have been placed as a graphical element where we can change its color let's go and change the color we can change color we can even change its design elements we can make it flat we can make it metallic style so let's keep it as flat side after that we can go to format and we can use text color we can change those colors as well we can even fill up the boxes with colors we can change different format on to our smart art so you can use that to design your microsoft powerpoint to have a greater view to your presentation so for this lesson we are going to learn how to insert audio to powerpoint for doing this we have to go to this insert option under insert option we have this audio so when i click on this audio on my pc i can go browse and i can insert the audio right also if i hit on record audio i can manually record an audio for example let's give a name my recording and if i insert over here i can start recording the audio for my powerpoint and through that i can use it to my powerpoint let's stop it and if i hit play we can hear the sound so you can see that i have a audio over here which will be played if i am on this slide itself so it will automatically be played now what i want to do i want to go to audio format and i can make it smaller bigger 
this icon which indicate this slide have audio so if i go to playback you can also find so many options which is volume which would be high also you have high during the slide or high during the show if you click on that this portion will be hidden so if i go over here this portion will be hidden right we can loop until it stops we can also use automatically it will start we don't have to press anything and through this way we can use our audio so if i start presenting it here, you cannot see can the icon over here recording, but the, audio the sound the have started playing so if i go to the next slide that audio will be gone so i hope that you have understood how you can insert audio to your powerpoint presentation see you on the next lesson so on this lesson we are going to learn how we can insert video on our slide so as you can see that we have our slide over here so let's go and take a new slide under which we have uh, this layout on this layout you can see that we have the option for title let's write insert videos and over here we can insert our video through you can see over here there are few icons on which we have this insert video icon if i click on this video icon we can insert our video so let's go to our folder and let me insert a video so let's insert this video over here and you can see that we have been able to install our video so now over here we have few handles so through these handles we can navigate we can resize this video for our slide so after that you can see down below over here we have a play button so this is the button from which we will able to navigate forward we can pause our video and we have the volume option as well so now after inserting the video you will have these two option video format and playback so first let's go to playback and let's make some settings over there so as you can see that we have this play button and if i click on this play button the video will start playing then we have add bookmarks so what happened when you use bookmark you just place your cursor in a place and you can just add a bookmark so what will happen when you start putting up bookmarks you can very easily go to that bookmark which you have been selected so anywhere in the slide presentation you want to go to a position of a video you can just simply click over there and you can start your videos so now as you can see that we have a big video and we want to cream it so you have this stream video option on which you can see that you have two buttons so this button if i just select it over here and the red one over here and if i press ok what will happen it will cream out the video and bring out the video that you want to display on your slide all right so after that when you are showing this slide you have to click it to start this video what if you want to automatically start so go over here on this video option and there you have this automatically play video whenever you are presenting this slide it will automatically start playing the video also when it ends so sometimes you have a small video and it ends and you need to start over again what you can do loop until stopped so if you use this what will happen that video will keep playing until you're changing your slide so over there you have full screen option hide while play uh, playing then you have volume even you have insert caption so you can easily insert the caption for that video then you can have this video format this video format is similar to your image you can change its style how you want to place it 
you can even correct its color you can add text bring forward back forward and even crop the portion of a video so i hope you have understood how you can insert a video on your powerpoint presentation so on this lesson we are going to learn how we can insert video for youtube so as you can see we are on our microsoft powerpoint under which we will go to this insert ribbon on this media section we have videos so from this video you can insert from your computer this device also you can use stock video and even you have the option for online videos so once you click from online video you have to insert the address for your online video so let's go and select a video from youtube so you can see that you have the option from youtube video slide share vimeo and stream so i want to use a youtube video let's go and use a video let's go and and copy this link right and after that we will going to paste it over here and then let's hit enter and once we press enter it will start downloading that video and it will appear to our slide now we can adjust it to a handle and then we can go to our video format we can make design for this frame and even on this playback we can go and we can play the video and we can also select a start point if we want in click sequence or we want it automatically so this is how you can insert a youtube or any other uh, social media videos on your powerpoint hope you have understood how you can do that see you on the next lesson so on this lesson we are going to learn how we can protect our presentation so as you can see that this is our presentation and we can edit it right we can edit it let's write protection and let's uh save it save as save to our powerpoint and give a name as powerpoint presentation protection right so uh, bef uh, then we will click on save right but this time we'll go to this tool option and go to this general option for protecting our powerpoint so over here you can see that file encryption setting for the document we can give password to open the file and another option is there which is password to modify so for this example i want any user who is opening it he can open it without a password but when he wants to edit it he have to give a password so for this i will give a simple password one two three and i will click ok and then i have to re-enter the password to modify one two three as we have given the password and i will hit ok now let's go back so now let's close this and let's open up the powerpoint production file let's open it and now as we have opened it for edit you can see that we are not able to edit it because it is asking password to modify right so let's go back over here click it again and we want to just read only file so you can see that we have been able to read the file but we cannot edit anything on the slide right so on this presentation we are unable to edit so if we open this file and we give our password one two three and hit ok we will now able to edit the file it, this is that simple right so now this is how you can make your powerpoint protected so now you might think that what if somebody is uh, going to save this file on a different name so let's open the file back again and we want to only read only we will click on read only and then let's try to save it 
in a different name right let's go to file and you can see that save save as option have been disabled because we have been protecting this slide so now how can we unprotect this powerpoint so let's open up the file give the password one two three and now we will go and save us back again and then let's go back to the tools general and we will simply erase the password and hit ok and after hitting ok if we save let's uh, save it now this slide have been unprotected for anyone to edit it so i hope you have understood how you can protect your powerpoint uh, design only people will able to see but they cannot edit and how you can remove that as well so on this lesson we are going to learn how we can uh, design an infograph uh, to our powerpoint so over here we gonna create an infograph for first we need to create or let's go to insert and use some shape so first i will use rectangle top shape from here and i will use another shape of oval I will use control and shift let me make it a little bit smaller so what I want to do now is that I want to intersect between this both for doing that I will select this both shape and go to march shape and subtract and after subtracting this I will click on this arrow button to use some shadow to this shape so i will go to this effect and under that you have shadow i will use a color i will use black color then i will increase this transparency let's use this transparency then let's use its size a little bit and use the blur you can increase or decrease it make the angle to zero and let's keep the distance at is uh at it is right now then i will insert another shape let's take this shape and let's let's bring this shape go to shape format and let's rotate it to flip vertical so now after rotating that shape i will bring it it down and now i will select the first shape and i will bring it to the font and then i will change the color so let's go and change the color to more color option let's go to more color option and select a color and let's change its color as well to yellow i guess okay and you can see that we have a shape border so let's go to shape format and shape outline let's go and change it make it no outline similar for the second shape with no outline and you can see that we have able to create an infograph so now we can use a text let's go to insert option and let's use text box and i will place a text box over here and write price now you can see that this font is little smaller let's make it a little bit bigger and we can change its font color to white and then i want to write some description but i want to copy the same design so i will use Control shift to copy this shape down below and now i can write description and i will make this description written a little bit smaller 20 font and i'll place it at center let's copy this text box and we can write anything we want
and let's make this font a little bit bigger to understand this is the description and let's adjust it great now i want to put a shape over here so i will go to insert go to this shape option or this icon option from this icon i will select a shape for the uh, i will select an icon for this so for this i will use for this i'm gonna use this dollar sign and let's insert it and you can see we have able to bring that dollar sign so let's bring it at the middle of this shape and we can adjust it as well in this graphic format we can even change its color so let's go and change its color to maybe red all right and we are done so let's copy it and paste it over here and now we can change their color go to shape format and let's change the color for the different view right let's change the color you can select any color that you want you can is use this eye drop shadow as well let's select the color and through this way you can very easily design infograph to your powerpoint presentation i hope you have understood how you can do that see you on the next lesson so on this lesson we are going to create infograph text animation so let's uh, select our slide then let's select the layout as blank and then let's right click and go to format black ground and let's take it as a light gray background and let's go to home select a rectangle and then let's cover this whole slide and let's go to shape format and let's change the fill to white and shape outline to no outline now we are going to pick a text box let's go insert use text box and let's add text which is water and let's make it bold we can place uh, increase the size as 200 uh, put it at the middle and then we can even change the font now we are going to select this both shape and go to shape format and merge it as combine so from the shift keyboard so now let's go and take the line shape click on shift and let's drag it from here to here and let's go to format and on the shape outline let's change the color to blue and let's change its width as 3 and let's go to this line option and from this line option let's go the dash type as let's select the cap type as round and join type as round as well so now let's go and pick a text box let's go insert let's go text box and let's put it over here let's put it 80 percent 80 percent let's place it at the middle 
and we are going to select this text color similar to the color we have so let's select the text color as blue that we have right now let's make it a little bit larger as a font let's make it 40 and now let's go and select a rectangular box and let's let's uh, before that let's fix this with this text box select them both and group it right and then let's go and bring the rectangle text box and let's create a shape and let's uh, go and make no outline and go and fill this color to blue and now let's play place it at down below over here all right now let's go to animation and after clicking on this animation let's uh, go and add animation and let's select add animation we are using fade so let's uh, keep the duration second as 2 5 and let's go to add animations let's go to line And I can select this one. Let's go add uh, as a line. And let's select this to animation to top over here. And after that let's select this effect option to up all right and then we will go over here and we will use after preview duration 1.5 second and then let's clip on this uh, drop down and let's go to effect option and over here we are going to change this and let's increase the smooth end and press ok now let's go and select this rectangle add animation let's select lines from effect option we will use up and let's make it 1.5 seconds and let's get it effect option smooth over here let's and let's send this to back play and you can see that the animation is working at the moment and over here effect we will use after previous all right so now let's play this animation and you can see that this animation is working absolutely fine so let's go and preview it over here we have water which is so let's start the animation so over here we are have water when we click we have 80% of water and you can see that we have a good design option which have been done through Microsoft PowerPoint so on this lesson we are going to design a sales banner so let's create a new layout which is blank layout and over here let's create some shape so let's go to insert 
and then we will go to shape and let's create a shape of palygram and let's select it as we have selected it let's um, go shape outline let's click on no outline fill and let's uh, change the shape color to gray and let's copy all that we can do is we can duplicate it and as we will duplicate it control plus d you can see it over here so let's make this color change to shape fill to black and now let's play press it over here now let's go and select a rectangular shape uh, shape select it over here and right clicking on it you can have edit point so through this way you can edit your shape very easily or you can change it shape position according to your name so now as we have this shape right now i'll select this shape and the shape that we have created merge it as subtract and we are able to create a format for this shape let's select it and let's group it Control plus g as we have able to group it let's just change it position and now let's go and select the text box let's select text box and over here we have able to select a text box let's write black friday cells and let's go and change its color to white let's increase its size we can just change its uh, position rotate it place it on the middle of this shape place it on middle let's make it a little bit larger great now let's copy the shape and paste it and let's create a smaller shape on top of this shape all right and on this we will change its color let's change this color to yellow copy and paste it and let's make a shape over here let's make this color as uh, red now let's go and put a text box on this which may be spatial offer right let's increase its size rotate it Place it on the middle of this shape, copy paste it and let's bring it over here and give 70% off. Let's place it in the middle and then let's go and select some of the shape that we can use as an element. Let's change it color to yellow. Uh, go to shape outline let's increase its width to three let's copy paste it we can use this element uh, somewhere on the design great now i want to place a background so let's select this copy and paste it let's increase its size and i want to put this as a color so let's go to the format shape and let's place a pattern on it so let's click on this pattern select a pattern and we are going to change this color to blue pattern fill let's change the color to bluish right all right now let's place this new shape and let's send it to back change its color to blue and let's put it on the back of all of the shapes right now i want to create our animation so let's go to animation 
I will select the darker shape that we have. Let's go to add animation. Let's go add animation. Over here, let's go more animation. From here, let's go to more entrance effect and we are going to do basic zooming. Okay, let's go to animation panel and from here, let's go to effect option. On this effect option, we want it from outside and hit OK. All right. So for this text also, we are going to create an animation, more entrance effect, zoom, basic zoom. Let's go over here and click on start as after preview. Then we are going to use effect option, which will be outside and hit OK. Now let's play. So from start, if I play it, you can see that we have able to create the animation. Now let's use this line and animation. It will appear after preview and let's play it. And also we can use this shape and animation. we can um, use as spinning and let's put it as after preview so now let's go to our presentation and see how it looks so let's you can see this is our sales banner let's click it and you can see that we have able to create an animation for our sales panel Hope you have liked this video. See you on the next lesson.